Hello, cherry lovers. Uh, today, I got a few uh, things I want to tell you or show you guys that uh, what's going to happen in the next three, four months. I got a few things that has to happen basically in every month. So I'm going to show you guys uh, on the screen back here everything that I got going on. First of all, if you look back on that back screen, you're going to see that it's still winter. Uh, not a whole lot you can do in the winter time, but it's still winter, but we have to plan ahead of time. So we're going to get right into it and we're going to show you guys uh, just what I've got to do starting in each month and we'll see how far and what I get done. So stay tuned, cherry lovers. <music> Okay, the first thing we're, that I don't like is we usually do it the first week in March is taxes. Man, do I hate taxes. Uh, it's got to be done, but uh, I never, we never know if we're going to get anything back. Uh, we don't know if we owe. And that's just one thing that I just don't like, I don't care for. I know most of us don't, but... Uh, you know, I guess we have to pay our fair share, where whether it's our fair share or not. But yeah, taxes ain't my best uh, thing I like to do, but uh, we still have to do it in March. And once we get that all done, then we pay a move on, and then we start to do the stuff that I enjoy to do, so or I enjoy doing. So, you guys, uh, we'll go on to the next. Let's go on into April, and we'll start showing you oh what I do, not them. Okay, cheer lovers. Before I get uh, into that, I wanted to, uh, I, I, a lot of people have asked me where do I get my trees from, and what kind of trees do I get, and why am I getting them? Well, what I get or where I get my trees from is called Vanwell Nursery, and you can see it on the screen back there. They're an excellent uh, nursery company. They uh, are they're out of Washington State, and they they they'll work with you they'll help you they'll even like i said you guys have seen we've had uh, trouble with trees and they're replacing them and so they're a very good nursery uh, i like their trees uh, you can get them in uh, pots you can get them in bare root stock you can get them in all different sizes there's all kinds of different trees that you guys can uh, order there so if you want to check these people out check banwell nursery out i'm not they're not sponsoring me. I just, that, that's the nursery I get my trees from. And they're good people. So you can find them online. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll put it in the description below. But they are a great uh, nursery and tree company. So check them out. Okay, cherry lovers. Now we're going to move on to all the things that uh, I need to do for 2020. Uh, they're going to be back here on the screen, but I'm going to read them off to you and tell you when and what, where I'm going to do them and how I'm going to do it. So, number one, I've got to buy dirt for the new trees that are coming in, uh, and also the new trees that I have to replace. I bought a few extra cherry trees that I figured some of them that weren't going to survive in the second high tunnel through the winter, I'm going to replace those cherries. There's going to be a few other cherry trees that I won't have to change out so then everything will be fine but that's what I've got to do and that's the reason why I've got to buy dirt. Uh, I'm also got to make sure the land is ready for these trees. That's going to start in April. I've got to make fine places for all these trees if the new trees live. When I get up there by April and check the cambiums on them and if they're still green on the stalks or the, the trunk of the tree then uh, they're, they're, they're good to go, and I'm going to have to find room for these trees. I've got room for them. I'm just going to have to clear it all and make sure it looks really good. So that's what I've got to do next. I've got to buy fertilizer. I'm going to go to a new fertilizer, It's and I'll tell you guys that in a minute down the road, what kind of fertilizer I'm going to get and how to fertilize and why to fertilize, because uh, the fertilizer I have been using... Uh, they're too small of bags and they're too expensive, but in, in order for me to stay organic, there's not a lot of fertilizers out there, but I've found a fertilizer online that's going to work out great for me, so I'm going to switch to this because it comes in a bigger bag and it's cheaper. So that's number three. Number four, uh, I've also got to get ready for if the cherries do come in this summer, which we are hoping for, 
that's number four. I've got to buy uh, cherry harvest bags for people. I've got to find uh, containers to put them in. I've also got to uh, order some signs to stick out to the roads, out to the main roads, so that people know how to get into the farm and get these cherries. So that's another thing that's coming on. If this happens, we'll know by sometime in the middle of April and May whether or not our trees are full of cherries. If they are, that's the next step I've got to go to and get this thing going and rolling so that we have cherries to sell to people out in the public. So that is number four. Number five, I've got to get the water lines set up. I've got to buy more water lines for the new cherries, uh, the new trees, uh, apple trees that are coming that they're replacing if they all live. So if that's all comes into play, I have to get the, the water lines so these trees get drinks of water. That's another thing. If, like I said, if a bad scenario comes where all the trees died, I just replace the trees where I've already got the other trees and I don't have to worry about the water lines. But if a good scenario goes, which I am hoping for, then I have to buy more water lines to keep these trees going. The next thing is not, the next two are not too many I don't know about, or should say the not next three, which is... Uh, possibly putting down a new well. Uh, I'll put a new well down if the money's there. Uh, right now, money isn't there. So if the money's there, I'll put a new well down. Uh, I do it myself. I'll have my brother or my son or, or I'll have somebody help me, but it's not hard. We only go down uh, about 28 feet and it's all sand. So it takes us about two days to drive it, but it goes down and we get water. But it's all about the money. So I don't know if I'm going to put that down this year. It may and it may not. But that's what um, my possible things are for 2020. Uh, putting up a high tunnel. Uh, haven't heard from them. Uh, not thinking we're going to get one this year. So if that's the case, we don't have to worry about a high tunnel. If it comes in, we, me and Joyce have sat down and decided we're not sure if we want to get another high tunnel or not. So if that doesn't happen, it's not really a big deal. But if, if, if it, they do say we got it, we have to sit down and, and look over the costs and see if that's even feasible to have another high tunnel. So that's another thing that we don't know about right now. And then uh, if the money is pretty good, I want to build a shed up there so that I can keep my tractor up there and, and get all the tools and all the stuff that I've got in my basement out of the basement so that it's outdoors and I don't have to keep going indoors and down the basement to get stuff. So that's kind of the 2020 outlook that I've got going on or things that I know that have to happen and then there's things down at the bottom of the list that may happen. I'm not sure about the last three, but uh, we're going to try and uh, if the money's right, we'll we'll pursue it and, and get it done. But uh, they're, the high tunnel, if it don't ever come, okay. Uh, well, eventually we're going to have to have another well put down. So we'll just have to work into that to the next couple of years or whatever. But if the money's right, then we're going to put a, put a well down this year. It just all depends. Like I said, it, it's you know all out in the future, so I don't really can't tell you everything. But the rest of the stuff has to be done when the trees get here. So we're going to go on to the next thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, I was talking to you about earlier about the, the fertilizer. I decided to change fertilizer. We used to use Dr. Earth's fertilizer, but they don't come in big enough bags. And anywhere I get them around here, buying all them little bags are too expensive. I can go to a 16-pound bag of what's called, it, of course, it's up there on the back screen, Job's Organic Fruit and Citrus Granulated Food. It's organic. What we need is organic fertilizer. Uh, I'll also discuss why why we're getting this and the applications that they tell you how much fertilizer to put down and why we're going to put what we we're going to put down to make our trees grow and because of us being organic these are the reasons why but Job's organic if you're going to go organic uh, go with Job's I've read it all over I've read everything about it these this is a good fertilizer for any kind of fruit trees if you are going organic. So this is what I'm switching to and I wanted to let you guys know that that's what I switched to because last year I showed you Dr. 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 Earth. It's a good fer organic fertilizer, but I can't get it at the price I want it for and this stuff is good stuff too. So, okay, I'm gonna go on and tell you guys how, to, how much fertilizer they recommend for 
not being organic and I'm also going to go on and tell you guys what you have to do if you're organic and why you put it on at a different amount and I'll tell you that here in a okay I got the chart up and back here so that you guys can see what I'm going to read to you and then I'm going to explain it to you it's this is how the amount of fertilizer you should put on your cherry trees but this right here is the amount of fertilizer that you put on if it's standard not organic and then I'll tell you tell you why in a minute it says what kind of fertilizers do you need do cherry trees need common uh, recommendation is fertilize your cherry trees once a year on a low nitrogen fertilizer such as 5 10 10 in early spring about a month before bloom all right that is for standard fertilization that ain't for organic organic what I have to do is I usually have to use a 355 instead of a 51010 fertilizer it works just as good the only thing is with organic on organic fertilizer you have to apply it twice a year once in the spring and once just after uh, the fruit you pick the fruit and you're done with the fruit you fertilize, you fertilize it again organically that's the difference it's a I don't know I I haven't researched this part of it but it's a stronger fertilizer and I don't understand the standard stuff but I do know with organic uh, trying to find a 5 10 10 and organic you're not gonna find it but you can find a 3 5 5 which is a less of a uh, less strong as I would say I guess that what you'd call it and the strength isn't as much but it's because it's organic so it does it does do the same thing yes it does will the trees grow yes they will uh, that's the difference between a lot of uh, standard fertilization and organic it's usually a weaker strength but it's because of what they're using and it's all organic matter instead of uh, what do you want to call it? chemical type fertilizers so that's the reason why you can't find them in a stronger strength and that's why I'm going with the Job's because it's good for apples and it's good for uh, cherry trees and you will apply the same thing and I'm going to show you this the next sheet coming up the next sheet coming up will be for the apple trees and I'll give you a rundown on that okay now for the apple trees the fertilizer the standard fertilizer not going organic I'm gonna read this off and this is what you do if you guys are gonna stay standard if you're gonna go organic I'm gonna to explain to you what's going on okay for the standard fertilization if you just you're not going organic it's the fruit trees make less of a desirable growth may need fertilizer apply a balanced fertilizer of 10 10 10 because apple trees need a lot more nitrogen to grow uh, in the early spring before buds okay the recommendation rate of one tenth of a pound is actually of nitrogen per year of tree age tree age is the number of years since the tree was planted in the home ground meaning the year that you planted it not the year that you got the tree and, and this is what this was the confusing part you can get the tree from the nursery and it's been growing for one two years it depends on how big around the trunk is but if if you when you get it is when they classify it as the year of the tree meaning you planted it that's the year that that tree's life is that's just the way the, the industry is so if you get a tree that's already and if usually they're one or two years old when you plant it it's basically the third year but when you plant it based on fertilizer and everything else that is the first year of the year tree that is when you plant it so i just wanted to describe that to you guys so you understand that there's a difference and, and that's just the way the standards are in the industry and that's how they do it now as for me organically they want a 10 10 10. can't find a 10 10 10 in organic all right so that's why i went with that are Job's and it's 355. I have to apply that for apples in the spring before the buds just like the cherries. I also have to uh, put the, app, the fertilizer on in the mid, mid season uh, sometime in July and then in, in, uh, just before September or October in that late September range I've got to apply the fertilizer again. 
because it's organic. It's not the chemical part. So it's all good nutri- nutrients in the, so- in the uh, fertilizer that we got. It's organic, and that's why the organic matter has to be applied a little more because it's not a chemical-based fertilizer. And that's the reason why I've went with this and we are staying organic. So this is the process we have to do. Now, if you look at the screen on both the cherries and the apples, the fertilization, if you're not organic, you guys can apply the standard 10-10-10 on the apples and 5-10-10 on the cherries. That's what you can once one time. And I'm just letting you guys know the difference between what I'm doing organically versus as I'll say it, mechanically, which is the standard fertilizer. So this is what I got going on right now. And uh, uh, I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you guys uh, the rest of the stuff. And there's one other thing that I was going to tell you guys that uh, I didn't have on my sheets is sometime in April uh, to protect the apple trees and everything because they're going to start growing. And yes, we got critters and everything. I'm going to have to put up a better fence. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, either T posts or fence posts, and I'm going to get what they call six foot chicken wire. And I'm going to put the chicken wire all the way around the trees to keep the deer and keep all the other critters out because all the information that I have read and looked up is that you got possums that like to eat apple trees, they like to eat the, the, the new leaves, raccoons like to eat new leaves. Squirrels don't bother the leaves too much. A rabbit will eat the leaves if it can climb up and get it, but they're, they'd have to jump too high. But those plus the deer. Uh, deer can jump over a six foot fence. Uh, yeah, uh, all this is basically for the deer is basically a deterrent. I'm also gonna run, I've read where if you take on each post as you're going down, after you put the six foot chicken wire up, you go up, three more feet and run a white line all the way around your fence when the deer come up onto that and look at your fence and they see that white line way up there they're a little bit leery of jumping over that for in fear they're going to get caught in the in the line so a lot of times they'll stay they'll stray away from it and say well you know go i'm on my, my way merry way i'm not going to get tangled up in this fence it's a little high. Yes, they can go over a 10-foot fence, but it's just basically, you know, you, you have to deter these animals. Do you, are you, am I going to keep them all out? I'm not all of them, but uh, I'm going to try. And that's what all any uh, fruit producer is going to try and do is try to protect their crop and try to deter the animals as best as possible. If they get to where they're a real problem, um, it's... Like I said, I'm, I'll, I'll take other drastic steps if I have to, to eliminate them if they become a problem. But I think after I put the fence up and everything like that, I don't think I'm going to have that much problem. Uh, I think I'll have more problems when the fruit comes in. Like if you start seeing apples on the trees and everything where the animals start seeing that, that's when I'm going to start seeing the problems down the road. But I'm going to try and get the fence put up to protect the trees in case the deer decide they want to come in and nibble on all the branches and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to stop that. So that's what I want to, wanted to tell you guys. And also, I want to thank everybody. Because back here on this screen back here shows 2,500. We have 2,500 subscribers. We love it. We love you guys. We're hoping to grow even more. I would say I'd like to be up to 10,000 by the end of this year. And with you guys' help, you guys can help us out by uh, liking and subscribing to our channel. Uh, we try to put out the best content we can for you, and I hope you guys like it. Uh, Joyce is always putting out good cooking videos, and I'm trying to give you guys all the information that's going on on the farm. And occasionally I'll throw in a little part of uh, me going downstairs and uh, doing my wood shop and making the cabinets for the farm up there. So please like and subscribe, hit the little red button down there, and we thank you for watching this video, and keep watching because spring's on its way, and we're getting started to go to work up there on the farm. Bye now.